Also, I feel like Wish might run into a cliche problem. Not that the movie is cliche, but since it's an anniversary project, it's going to heavily lean into references and easter eggs. I just hope the movie still has its own personality and not just relating to Disney's past projects. So, do I say I told you so, or...? Disney's Wish. Not the boat, but Disney Animation's 60 second feature film. A movie they claim is a century in the making. A movie that supposedly brought back the classic Disney villain everyone desperately wants after a decade of twists. A movie with watercolor backgrounds and a classic I want song. A movie I was genuinely excited to watch. So I finally got the chance to watch Wish, and... I believe I have just been threatened. Disney, how did you fumble the bag? Sorry. How did you fumble the bag this hard? I don't think I've ever been this disappointed after watching a Disney animated feature. Plus, seeing the concept art made it even worse because you were so on track. Watching Wish was a frustrating experience at best, and anger-inducing at its worst. It felt like I was looking at the aftermath of something that had its own ideas and love for what made Disney an animation powerhouse in the first place, but everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked, and now we're just looking at a wasteland. About your fixer up. So, originally, I had this great, brilliant idea about criticizing Wish because they got rid of the romance between Starboy and Asha, as well as Evil Amaya and Magnifico. A very fresh idea, I know. Well, you know how in Encanto, Mirabelle was trying to help her family one member at a time, but the only way to fix it was to confront Abuela and tear the casita down because the family was fundamentally unstable due to the trauma it was built on. Yeah, that's what my first 13-page essay felt like. Wish is a different beast entirely. Over the recent years, Disney Animation's post-revival era movies have been met with a lot less fanfare than their revival era counterparts. Sequels aren't meeting expectations, and their original movies are giving less than those in the post-Renaissance experimental era of the 2000s. In comes Disney's Wish. Disney Animation's return to the musical fairy tale animated feature. A tried and true combo that is known for successfully recapturing both the public and critics' love for the studio. Think Cinderella, The Little Mermaid, and The Princess and the Frog. All just in time for the Walt Disney Company's 100th anniversary. Wish's biggest selling point, apparently. And that's my biggest gripe I had with the movie. It claims to be a love letter for Disney animation, but the movie ended up feeling very disingenuous. Like, if every movie from Disney Animation Studios is a cake, then Wish is the abomination fauna made. Fold in gently. Anyways, I'm here to show you what I mean by that. I'm here to tell you why this movie is an insult to the Disney formula. This is Disney's Wish. Again, not the boat. When it comes to the universe, we're all shareholders. Get back to your system! Solar. We open the movie with a beautifully decorated fairy tale book. A very well-known trope from classic Disney movies. Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and the very first full-length animated feature, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Many Disney movies use this in different fonts, such as Beauty and the Beast with their stained glass windows, or Hercules with Greek pottery. And it's so iconic that Shrek literally wipes his ass with it because that tells you immediately he's not like the other girls. Somebody. So the book tells the story of Magnifico, a young sorcerer who learned magic to protect wishes, and how he and his wife built the Kingdom of Rosas for those who wanted their wish deemed worthy and granted. We then cut to a cottage in the woods where our main character, Asha, voiced by Ariana DeBose, 
is helping our Saba Sabino get ready for his 100th birthday. If only we could understand you. Ha 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 ha. Uh, Asha's mother announces that there's a wish granting ceremony tonight, and the family is excited for the king to finally grant Sabino's wish. Asha then runs off with her pet Valentino to her tour guide job in the city. And here we get the movie's first song, Welcome to Rosas. And someone that I like to kiss. Oh dear. Now on the surface, Welcome to Rosas is serviceable. It's upbeat and wordy in the likes of the family Madrigal to provide the audience a lot of information in a short amount of time. Mainly the king. He's just like us with a twist. How your wishes are protected and granted. When you turn 18, you get to give your wish in a ceremony. And that everyone is happy to be in Rosas. It's unlikely that he'll be unhappy. But yeah, haven't we been through this already? The problem with Welcome to Rosas is that Wish already used the storybook opening for their exposition. We already know about the king, how the kingdom came to be, and how the magic applies to wishes. What we need to learn is who Asha is. After the storybook exposition, the first song in Disney movies, aka the I Want song, tells the audience who our protagonist is, what they believe in, and how they see the world. Just look at Beauty and the Beast with the song Belle. We learn that Belle is tired of her provincial life, the townspeople see her as beautiful yet non-conforming, and that Gaston wants to marry Belle. We also learn from the reprise that Belle wants to leave the village and have a grand adventure. She's singing about her home, but none of this information has anything to do with the rose, the castle, or the beast, because that was all taken care of in the mural exposition. These are two different setups, Wish. Even going back to Encantos' The Family Madrigal, the song introduces the three generations of the family, Abuela, parents, and grandkids, their individual powers, Abuela's desire to earn her miracle, and even Mirabelle's perception of Isabella as the golden child slash prima donna. It doesn't mention Casita's creation, it doesn't mention the miracle's ability to give the family powers, nor the candle, because we already had our exposition in the opening. Anyways, after the tour, Asha meets up with Dahlia, best friend and honorary doctor of all things rational. That's not even a summary I made. The movie just has Asha yells it out because it doesn't want to waste their time on showing me who she is, I guess. Help me! Huh? Best friend and honorary doctor of all things rational. My interview is in one hour. I mean, how else are you gonna make up the three minutes you wasted on repeated information and a ham-fisted Lilo and Stitch reference? <laughs> also, side note, according to the Wish Book, A Recipe for Adventure, Dahlia is Taiwanese. Hey, Taiwan Lan, let's go! <laughs> Woo! Thanks for the information, Disney Wiki. So Asha is nervous. Sorry. I'm so nervous I think I'm going to explode. About her interview with the velvety Velvet sweet buttery what cream of a king to become the sorcerer's apprentice. I understood that reference. And here we meet Asha's group of friends, the seven teens. Okay, sheer numbers and blatant reference aside, Asha's supporting cast is terrible. So the supporting cast is there to highlight the qualities of their protagonist or antagonist, but let's see the seven teens interact with each other when Dahlia presents a new batch of Magnifico cookies. When Grumpy's cookie got sneezed on, both Asha and Bashful gives him their cookies. When Grumpy drops an exposition dump about the wishes for the third time. Your Saba turning 100 today and the fact that you're also turning 18. And when you give your wish to the king, you don't want to have to end up like Simon here. Shut the fuck up, no one cares. Everyone agrees with him. And when Sleepy asks everyone if they think he's boring, they all do the same, pfft, no expression. And when Queen Amaya arrives, everyone scramble to greet her. Yeah, there's no need for this big of a group because they're all doing the same thing. Besides Dahlia and Simon, Asha's group of friends feels excessive. And even worse, I'm learning nothing about Asha here. What sets her aside from the other teens? What makes her stand out? While waiting in Magnifico's office, 
Asha accidentally triggers a security spell, and it's here we finally get to meet King Magnifico, voiced by Christopher Whitelaw Pine. Asha starts off her interview spectacularly until she and Magnifico bond over great loss and their protectiveness for others. Magnifico then shows Asha the wishes, which, side note, he supposedly lets only a few people in, but Magnifico hasn't even offered her the position yet, and for someone who is this protective of wishes, it boggles my mind why Magnifico would even let Asha in. Why not just have Asha be Magnifico's apprentice already? Or have Asha be Magnifico's daughter? I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Anyways, it's here we get our second song of the movie, At All Cost. Oh boy. When it comes to the universe, we're all shareholders. Get back to your system! Solar! Now, out of context, At All Costs is a beautiful number and my personal favorite song from the movie. The vocals are lovely, and I'm glad Chris Pine gets to sing something good instead of Yeah, I got these jeans from outer space! Yeah. But in the movie, it feels... very out of place. It's a quote-unquote duet between King Magnifico and Asha, singing to each other the wishes. Despite it being a duet, Wish tries their hardest to make it not about the character singing. During the entire number, Magnifico and Asha do not make any eye contact, and any emotions they have are either towards the people in the Wish Bubbles, or the Wish Bubbles themselves. The lyrics, specifically... Felt as though I haven't, I hope it would be alright to stay right here beside you focuses on a newfound feeling of love for the other, indicating at all costs original form as a love duet, think I see the light, a whole new world, or if I never knew you. But that's just a theory. A wish theory. Just kidding guys, I have proof. If you listen to the demo version of at all costs, you'll notice two key things. A, the lyrics change in the chorus, And B, this little bit before Asha's part. Wow. What? So by explicitly saying love you, it's clear that Disney had Julia Michaels reword the song because, well, the singers of this duet changed. And if that wasn't enough, the wow here clearly shows that not only is Asha singing with someone, but it also reciprocates the feelings from the first verse. Wish is Julia Michaels' first time writing for a Disney movie, but this isn't her first collaboration with Disney, that being the pop rendition of In This Place for the credits of Ralph Breaks the Internet. Now, prior to this, Disney Animation has worked with pop artists for their soundtracks. There's Elton John for The Lion King, Bill Collins for Tarzan and Brother Bear, etc. This is a new. But I think the difference here is how uninvolved Michaels' songs are in the story. I know we're only two songs into this movie, and I really like Julia Michaels' work, but it's kind of clear from the musical sequences themselves that the songs aren't written with the full story in mind. The Wish songs don't progress the story, and you can kinda tell because the songs have no characters in mind, and everything feels very vague. Like, anyone can sing these lyrics. You can play Can You Feel the Love Tonight on the radio, but you can also clearly tell that it's about Simba and Nala's love and turmoil after their reunion. Simba is afraid of the past and Nala wants him to open up to her. They don't have to be complicated, but they have to apply to the characters in their current situations. Regarding adult costs in a Variety article, says Michaels, how cool would it be if we wrote a song that if you listen to on its own, it sounds like a love song. It could be something you could play at your wedding or be a lullaby to your kids. Just something really beautiful. But when you watch the film, it's the heroine and it's the villain. You realize they're coming about this both from various points. 
one from a very selfless standpoint and one from a selfish standpoint. Which can be very interesting. A love duet sung by the villain and heroine to their partners with different outlooks on love. The same essence with the duo Heaven's Light and Hellfire from Hunchback. But Wish didn't do that. And now we need Ariana Bose adding that she and Pine did not record the duet together because Disney wants to keep the love song but obviously keep Magnifico and Asha away from each other because of the implication. Even though it's not Pine and DeBose who have the egregious age gap, but the characters who are singing together in the scene, but who are the partners and why have they disappeared? We'll just put a pin in that. When it comes to the universe, we're all shareholders. Get back to your system, Solar! So after our lovely song, Magnifico is ready to give Asha her new position as the Sorcerer's Apprentice. I understood that reference. But Asha is distracted by her Saba's wish. It's his birthday today, and he's 100 years old. That's impressive. Man who turns 100 years old today. Your Saba turning 100 today and still waiting? Mr. Krabs, you return from your vacation. And asks King Magnifico if he could pick it for tonight's wish ceremony. Cashing in on that employee discount, I see. Girl, you didn't even accept the job. Well, that was fast, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, you know, most people wait a few months, even a year before they start asking me for things. I'm so sorry. I did not no, mean to- No, no, it's okay. It's okay. So Saba's wish is to create something to inspire the next generation? Which is too vague for the king to grant. Learning that most wishes will never be granted, Asha suggests that Magnifico return the wishes so that the people can try achieving them themselves. This is when Magnifico's mask of benevolence comes off, and we finally see the power-hungry king he really is. They deserve more than- I decide what everyone deserves. He's just like us, with a twist. No, Disney. Magnifico is not a classic Disney villain. His song is not a Disney villain song either. During the wish ceremony, Magnifico pulls a petty move on Asha by having her witness Sabinos' disappointment on top of rejecting her application. Obviously, I will not be offering you the position as my apprentice. But, but don't worry, I will still protect your Saba's wish and your mother's forever. Later that night, Asha tries to tell her family about the king and the wishes, but angers Sabino instead. Feeling frustrated, Asha leaves the house and we hear the song This Wish. I'm past dipping my toes in, but I'm not, no, I'm not past diving in. Now, I can't sit here and tell you that This Wish is the worst song or the most annoying. See, that's where all the best come from. But I will say that it's the most disappointing I want song in the Disney catalog. And it's not because it's written by a pop artist. Not every Disney I want song. I want adventure. I wanna stuff some chocolate. I want more. It has to be written in the manner of a Broadway style musical number. I wanna know. One of my favorite I want songs is actually I'm Still Here from Treasure Planet. But I guess we're back to the uninvolved critique because the lyrics to this wish applies to like every other Disney character. But when I speak, they tell me sit down, so I look up at the stars to guide me and throw caution to every warning sign. I did what I was told when someone told me no. Now I've got all of this freedom in my bones. I'm past dipping my toes in. It feels more like those songs Disney Princess makes for their brand where they directly reference their princess movies than an original Disney movie song. The colors of the can I really blame Julia Michaels for this though? Because according to that same article, Disney Animation Studios' chief creative officer Jennifer Lee had not yet written the script for Wish when Grammy-nominated songwriter Julia Michaels wrote the demo for this Wish in 2020. But that demo, Lee says, defined the whole movie. It became our North Star. I don't know, Jennifer Lee. Maybe? 
Maybe write the movie first and then collaborate with the songwriter? Anyways, the actual sequence of this wish is infuriating. Shots are so plain and static. There are a few good ones such as the birds and this water thing with Magnifico's mural. But then you get this laughable edit with like 6 cuts in 3 seconds like it's trying to compete with Taken 3's fence scene. And nothing is related to what Asha is singing. Why isn't she actually dipping into something? Why is she just walking from place to place? This entire sequence kills the momentum of the song because nothing here is complementing with the music. You're not giving this song a theatrical experience. You see how satisfying this is in Moana? Or Encanto? Why are you presenting this long ass arc shot like it's a James Baxter masterpiece, Disney? <laughs> Wish isn't actually 2D, right? When it comes to the universe, we're all shareholders. Get back to your system! Sona. So Asha's wish caused a bright light to shine all over the kingdom. And everyone enjoyed its warmth, except for Magnifico. I believe I have just been threatened. I don't know why it's this shot specifically, but the way Amaya was animated here made me realize how unnatural and over-exaggerated the animation in Wish feels. Okay, I know it could have been in this scene, but I was busy disassociating, alright? It's trying to be bouncy like they're 2D characters, but it's like the models are too rigid, so you end up with some really awkward shots instead. Apparently, Wish's art style was supposed to emulate a pop-up storybook, down to the stereoscopic 3D being handcrafted by the studio instead of a quick conversion. Which is cool, but there's no natural depth in the movie. Everything beyond our characters feel flat and one-dimensional because of this. You literally made Paper Man over 10 years ago, Disney. How can you not get the look we want? Anyways, Asha finds the origin of the glow, a little ball of light that stole Mickey's face. A star. Wow, you really couldn't figure that one out, Asha. While Star creates the worst character in the movie and tries to telepathically convey to Asha through the most annoying song, Watch out world, here I are! Let's talk about the big elephant in the room. Or I guess the little star boy not in the room. Yeah, you see what I did there? If you look at the book The Art of Wish, Bill Schwab, the art director of characters, said he designed Star as a human character, part magical, part glowing, inspired a bit by Peter Pan, with other versions having the charm of Mickey Mouse to bring some of Walt Disney's inspiration into a legacy project. Now obviously the human aspect of Star is gone from the movie. <coughs> Peter, don't turn me into marketable plushies. But we do see a lot of Star's Mickey influence in his facial expressions. And to be fair, the marketable plushie is marketable. I really want this big plush of Star. But, you know, I'd rather have this beautiful man. Alison Moore, one of the many writers of Wish, talks about human Star being too close to Genie and once Star became a mime character, it was brain-breaking and so liberating. Now Star and Asha have an emotional journey. They are soulmates. Soulmates, Disney? You ruined... a pair... of soulmates? Okay, soulmates aside, Human Star definitely left a bigger impact on Wish than Wish would like to admit. Instead of Star's magical shape-shifting, he now carries the ball of yarn and does some funky costume changes. Oh. Are those pajamas? Ah, thank you. We also see the soulmate connection linger because Asha constantly does the "Are you thinking what I'm thinking?" thing. We take them. Isn't that stealing? I mean, we can't. J right. I know what you're thinking because I'm thinking it too. I think we're thinking the same thing. Again. Does that mean you have a plan? 
Of course we have a plan. With plushy star throughout the entire movie. But like, how can Asha understand this little plushy immediately? You're telling me that this girl, the girl who has to see this yarn symbol to put together that plushy star is a star can know him too well by the end of this movie? Oh no. I know you too well now. You're going soon, aren't you? And it's pretty clear that At All Costs was meant for the moment Asha and Star fall in love. Like, you can even hear bits of At All Costs in Star's tracks. Look me in the eyes and tell me that wasn't the vision. The super cool double duet? Am I wrong, Disney? Back to the movie. After Asha learns that we're all made of stardust, I'm a star! The star agrees to help Asha steal her family's wishes back, and the trio head towards a kingdom. Meanwhile, a paranoid Magnifico seeks to use dark magic, but Amaya convinces him otherwise. Oh, my love. Excellent advice. As much as I hate the direction Wish took with this couple, I can't deny the chemistry and love these two have for each other. I mean, look at the soft heart eyes. Look at them! When it comes to the universe, we're all shareholders. Get back to your system! Sola! Sneaking back to the castle, Asha plans to ask Dahlia for help getting into the king's study. Without mentioning Star. However, her plan failed, so Asha introduces Star to the teens. Does Star grant wishes? No, but I think it wants to help me pursue mine. Little fairy godmother! With a 40 second long chicken dance. You know, Migration had a good bird type song. It's literally just stuck singing, but it's actually cute. Yeah, I actually genuinely liked that duck song. So Magnifico calls out for an assembly to find out more information about the mysterious light. There is a traitor amongst us. And thanks to Dahlia's distraction, Magnifico promises a wish-granting ceremony for whoever identifies the traitor. Side note, I swear to god, this bitch already had her wish granted last night. It's me! Is that not her? What? Hmm. I wonder who the traitor's going to be. Feeling disrespected, Magnifico storms off and sings his classic Disney villain song, This Is The Thanks I Get. Keep the name, I'm magnificent! I put the eye and I'm omnipotent! This is the thanks I get is the most fun Wish has with a musical sequence. Magnifico interacts with his environment, the visuals match with whatever these lyrics have going on, and we get some really cool shots at the end when he finally goes full evil villain. I especially adore this broken glass shot. The composition here is stunning, and he's got that look with his hair all messy. Smash. Now the song is not good. There's just not enough substance in the lyrics. I mean the entire chorus is and lyrics with substance are not menacing. It's giving love is an open door. Actually, no, that's that's an insult to love is an open door because at least that one's pretending to be a good guy love song, not claiming to be a classic Disney villain song. And every great villain needs a great song. If you're going for an upbeat pop song, give your lyrics some bite. I want to see my villains having fun and being a threat. Let Chris Pine be a little unhinged. Anyways, Asha and Star return home after successfully stealing back Sabino's wish. There's a deleted scene where Sabino starts playing his lute again and sings, 
But we gotta make room for the chicken sequence because Goo Goo Gaga kids love chickens dancing, so that's that. So Magnifico interrupts the moment by crushing Asha's mom's wish bubble. What is this? Oh, what a gift. All this time I've protected the wishes not knowing the power they yield. He's just like us, with a twist. It feels as if I can do anything. Shut the fuck up, no one cares. And Asha commits murder by shelf. From one domesticated animal to another. Help us! Monsters and dragons. And what, there's a very good fish that eats babies or something. What's, <laughs> what's that bit? <laughs> oh my god, he did something. Yeah, Valentino has to be the most worthless animal sidekick in a Disney movie. What makes a good animal sidekick? Animal sidekicks, both talking and non-talking, are there to emotionally support and highlight their companions through interactions. <laughs> Valentino doesn't do any of that. He's just here to be loud and impulsive. I mean, Scuttle is also like that, but he also shares Ariel's curiosity and is her connection to the human world. On the other hand, Heihei doesn't share any of Moana's qualities, or have qualities in general. He has one brain cell working overtime at all times. But Moana is the only person who believes in him, and in return he played a key part in the battle against Taka. You can literally take out Valentino from this movie, and nothing would have changed. All he does is yell out random jokes that aren't even funny. Shark! What? No, no, I, I, I have not seen the shark. I'm just practicing. Not funny. Dig on laugh. When it comes to the universe, we're all shareholders. Get back to your system. Solar! Back at the castle, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Magnifico uses more wishes to gain more power, and Amaya sees the dark magic taking over her king. Am I glowing? I feel as if I am. Yes? So, I guess now's the time to talk about our sweet, cream, buttery king? Velvety, sweet, buttercream of a king. Yeah, that. Despite being the strongest character in Wish, Magnifico is kind of a mixed bag. Disney wanted his personality to be similar to the Evil Queen, Maleficent, and Gaston. Evil, yes, but also vain and petty. Traits that hinge on beauty. Yet, Wish is not about beauty. So when Magnifico sings about getting jeans from outer space and not charging rent, what does that say about Asha? What does that say about Star? Well, nothing. Disney villains are the antithesis of their heroes, and their defeat further proves the film's message. Gaston is vain because the film's message is about inner beauty. He weaponizes the beast's looks, and Belle calls him out on it. He's my friend. If I didn't know better, I'd think you had feelings for this monster. He's no monster, Gaston. You are. So what should Magnifico care about? Well, I think Magnifico should be a cheater. You need to leave. In the sense that he over relies on magic and craves perfection. I mean, he literally grants people's wishes so they don't have to pursue their own dreams. No hard work, no imperfections. I mean, even his design is symmetrical. Perfection is literally built into this man. Magnifico can be vain and power hungry, but he should also be lazy. Why risk failure when magic guarantees success? I know I'm basically describing Velvet and Veneer from Trolls Band together, but they're literally the antithesis to hard work and imperfection. My guess is that the original Magnifico and Amaya are probably similar to that duo. Anyways, Asha is back at the castle in search of the seven teens. Sorry, it's 16. Because what do you know, Simon betrayed everyone to get his wish granted. Why am I gasping? I already knew that. Since Magnifico is now green, green. Simon's wish of becoming the most loyal knight resulted in him getting brainwashed and outing the other teens. It's like a monkey spot kind of thing. Oh, and Amaya looks sad, so Asha decides to recruit her for the cause, I guess. If 
Unsanded mahogany. <laughs> ah! Oh, good find, Valentino. My butt found it. Apparently, Magnifico's green sona isn't setting off any alarms because Asha's friends actually believe that Asha is killing people. And here we get knowing what I know now. That's a lie, 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 lie. I guess out of all the songs in Wish, this is the most recent. I mean, it has a catchy chorus, but the rest of the song is I was sleeping now I'm something else. Clunky. Knowing what I know now also has an identity crisis. It starts off as a serious uprising training song, but then the middle went full trash in the camp like this was the charming side character shenanigans song all along. Till they hear our feet go dum, dum, dum. But hey, Queen Amaya ate her part. Because we need that empowering moment of a queen coming into her own, don't we Disney? The sequence for the song is pointless though because they're building a model of Rosas? But Star's not even destroying the model as Magnifico? And who are they posing for? Me? With Amaya's help, Asha initiates her and Star's plan to distract Magnifico long enough for Star to free all the wishes from his tower. Asha also completes her outfit with a brand new magic wand. The plan went as well as it could, I guess. Asha successfully distracts Mag- And he's not even real. I don't think he's prepared for what's coming! So I guess Magnifico waited for all the teens to fumble their way into releasing the wishes just to capture them again? <laughs> Surprise. That's suspicious. That's weird. When it comes to the universe, we're all shareholders. Get back to your system, Sona! Before the final confrontation, oh, the stars are out tonight. I want to talk about some of the deleted scenes and the potential of what Wish could be. Side note, I got the names of these deleted scenes from Movies Anywhere, and I can't get a hold of Magnifico's Secret. So if you know what that scene is, let me know in the comments because I'm genuinely curious. The first scene is Valentino is a star, where Asha and her friends try to convince Magnifico that Valentino is star. That's just a goat! The plan failed despite Valentino's efforts, and Magnifico absorbs a ton of wishes for the finale, turning into this genie-like giant with lightning for hands and eyes that can glow. There are a few things we learn from this. At one point, Valentino had a baby voice instead of Who knew my voice would be this low? The cottage confrontation was in a public setting, and Amaya's cat was still in the movie after her villain role was erased. But Magnifico's transformation interested me the most. Hear me out. We learn from the beginning of the movie that Magnifico studied the world's magic after learning how hard it is to achieve dreams, and now he can grant wishes. So it's basically cheating, taking the easy way out, like using AI to steal art and then calling yourself an artist. <laughs> My theory is that in this version, when Magnifico grants you your wish, you gain a magical gift. So if you want to be a musician, your gift is the ability to play any instrument. On the other hand, Magnifico can get the gift when he crushes a wish instead of green. That's why when he absorbs all the wishes, he turns into this giant monster because of the excessive amount of gifts. Yeah, I find this villainous form of Magnifico to be more threatening, and it's reminiscent of many Disney villains transforming in the finale, such as Maleficent, Ursula, and Radigan. Also, the use of magic and gifts would be reminiscent of Encanto and Aladdin, so the overall theme of Wish would lean into being yourself and defining your worth. Next is Finding Flazino, where Asha finds Magnifico's apprentice Flazino in the dungeon along with Dahlia. There's an air of mystery in this version of Wish. Asha's kidnapped family, the hidden dungeon, Magnifico's true powers, and Star's ability to heal people with destroyed wishes? While this is the more uninteresting deleted scene of the bunch, I like the more sneaky approach of the teens figuring out how to defeat Magnifico and Amaya, 
Instead of Amaya just joining the group and giving immediate access to the wishes. Up next is the wishing tree, where Sabino shows Asha a hidden wishing tree and encourages Asha to stop Magnifico from taking more wishes. I love this scene because it's intimate and shows us who Asha is. She's reserved, timid, and very careful. I mean, her first response to the wishing tree was to take down the wishes because Magnifico could take them. We have to take them down. But you long for danger, don't you, Asha? What? Uh she writes about risking danger if it means giving people a chance to achieve their wish, but is fine with their current situation. She's more pessimistic compared to Sabino, but is contemplative and cares deeply for him. This gives Asha room to grow and find her voice during her adventure. The Wishing Tree also shows Sabino's bigger role in the story. Here, Sabino's age actually matters. Not because it's a trait for the audience to feel bad for when his wish doesn't get granted, but because it shows his resilience over the years of him chasing his wish. Sabino in this version of Wish is similar to Grandma Tala in Moana. He goes against the rules set by Magnifico and encourages Asha to help her people despite Asha's hesitation. Uh, I'm okay. Give me a second. I just forgot to breathe there. He's also very amusing and serves as a great foil for Asha before Starboy's introduction. Speaking of Starboy, the last and my favorite deleted scene is To Rosas, where we see Star, Asha, and Valentino avoid getting captured by Maya and her guards. I fucking love this scene. There's the banter between Star and Asha, Valentino doesn't talk, Amaya is evil, and we get a fun chase sequence with magical transformations. We don't see Star in his boy form here, but this is literally everything I wanted from Wish. The chase sequence is snappy and reminds me of Cusco and Pachas' chase sequence from The Emperor's New Groove. But we do get some magical twists since Star is a shapeshifter. Like when he merges his horse eyes, or forms a pair of wings at the last minute. The dialogue between Asha and Star also confirms my suspicions about the Asha we ended up with. I'm getting pretty good at this planning stuff. Um, you know what might help that plan? If you weren't so bright. Oh, thank you. Oh, wait, you meant- Shiny, glowing, way too much light. Turn it down, turn it down. Oh! oh. Better? Much. My guess is, when Disney plushified Starboy, the movie lost a lot of its humor. Because Starboy is the wide-eyed character who's- A bit quirky at night. And Asha is his calm, level-headed foil. The yin to his yang. So to make up for Starboy's absence, Asha became a hodgepodge of Starboy and original Asha. I mean, that would explain why Asha flops between quirky to a 12 and serious leader in the final movie. Are you okay? No, I... I mean, yes. A little longer than a few minutes later. And that's why I want to work for you. Anyways, that concludes our intermission featuring Wish's deleted scenes. <sighs> Back to the actual movie, I guess. When it comes to the universe, we're all shareholders. Get back to your system, Solar! Oh my god, I forgot to talk about Asha. You know, our main character of this movie. Asha is so... forgettable? I... I can't even say she's a bad character, because at least a bad character is consistent. Her concept art made her out to be a quiet artist who keeps things to herself. And while we see a glimpse of the artist in her with the little animation throwaway... Is this anything? Oh, uh, what am I looking at? It's a goat. Oh, it's hopping. Certainly. See? Oh, again, that is a unique talent. It's clear that the writers ended up writing her as however the story needed her to be. Awkward because the movie needed humor, and serious when the plot needed to move forward. Disney has a recent history of overusing the socially awkward protagonist, aka the quirky girlies, but at least most of their awkwardness made sense. Anna and Rapunzel grew up isolated. <sighs> Too weak to handle myself out there, huh, mother? Mirabelle and Judy used positivity to deflect their insecurities. Tomorrow's another day. Yeah, but it might be worse. 
And Raya is a quarantine princess who spent way too much time being cringe and flirting with her only online friend Namari. Meanwhile, Asha hangs out with a large group of teens every day. If anything, she should be the most socially adept girl within the Disney girlies. But instead, Asha just glides along the plot with a vague personality. And I... I just don't care about her. Sorry. Anyways, Asha returns to the kingdom and Magnifico drags her up to his platform. How's the whole taking your wish into your own hands working out for you? Oh wait! I don't actually care. Yeah, even the movie doesn't want to bother having a message, I guess. So Magnifico absorbs all the wishes and star to become the ultimate queen. Mirrors, mirrors on the wall. Oh, they didn't even do the reference right. Magic mirror on the wall. After trapping everyone with magical thorns. I understood that reference. Asha's last stand is to sing to the people of Rosa's because we eat the leaves and they eat the sun. Yeah, something like that. Also, what is this move? What did that do, Magnifico? Are we sucking out life forces or what? Anyways, credit where credit is due, this wish reprise is definitely the movie's best scene. The music really shines here, and the lyrics actually show the determination of the people and the hope within them. And to have Asha say stars just like me is not only a great callback to the stardust, but Asha's belief in her people is a great antithesis to Magnifico's reliance on dark magic. Just like what Amaya said earlier, wow. Visually, the staging feels grand. I really like everyone's stars shining through the mist. And the character performances are pretty solid. It's a very effective scene and it's great to finally see some of that Disney magic shine. Someone cooked here. Okay, but this scene where Amaya sends Magnifico to the dungeon really bugged me. Because the big spooky book said that once Magnifico engages in dark magic, he is entangled with it forever. Embrace forbidden magic just once, and you commit to it for eternity. But it's clear that we see him return to his original state when the wishes are returned. So did the staff trap him because classic Disney villains have to die at the end? And why does Queen Amaya treat Magnifico like she doesn't love him anymore? I mean, she wanted to break the dark magic's hold on Magnifico five minutes ago? At the very least, break the hold it has on him. And why did Magnifico dunk on true love when he clearly found his? He and his loyal wife- Is it, my love? Oh, my love. Excellent advice. Amaya, darling, come, come! Six hours later- Oh, true love, how sweet. So much for true love. A few moments later. Hang it on the wall. In the dungeon. Please, no, the dungeon. Because we need that empowering moment of a queen coming into her own, don't we, Disney? With Magnifico gone and the wishes returned, Queen Amaya and Asha are determined to help people fulfill their wishes on their own. And without magic this time. Never mind, Star grants Asha a brand new magic wand, and with a really lackluster transformation, Asha is now a fairy godmother. <laughs> no, I couldn't be that. <laughs> I could? Wait a second. Where's the dress, Disney? You can't just Cinderella sparkle dust without the transformation. That transformation animation is Walt Disney's favorite animation and you did it like that? Like trash? I don't think so. <sighs> Remember when Disney references were fun easter eggs that don't interrupt the story and are just cool little details that you notice after a few rewatches? Now references are just so in your face that even those TikToks would think it's too on the nose. Did you know that in Wish? The deer named Bambi calls the bear John. Ben, hey, thanks for not eating me, John. Don't mention it, Bambi. Because little John from Disney's Robin Hood is also a bear. I mean, I also referenced a lot of Disney movies in my critiques, but isn't that what legacy projects are about? Recognizing and playing off of past projects in something new? Not shoving cheap nostalgia baits in your face? Whoa, whoa. 
Anyways, the movie comes to an end with its final message. Oh, Star, how can we ever thank you? <laughs> That's easy. Just keep wishing. <sighs> and my ice cream stick told me to be happier. What am I supposed to do with that? And that was Disney's wish. Um... Nick and Judy are in the credits. And so is Yokai. That was his stake. When it comes to the universe, we're all shareholders. Get back to your system! Solar! Wish is really bad, guys. And not just by Disney standards, although that doesn't mean much these days. <laughs> it promises a return to the Disney fairy tale formula, but the characters are annoying, the plot is convoluted, the runtime is filled to the brim with sequences adjacent to dangling keys, the songs have identity issues, the movie doesn't even have a message, and it's just... tired. I don't know. Since 2018's Ralph Breaks the Internet, Disney Animation has been in a... creative slump. But can you really blame the artist? I mean, just look at their head of story, Mark Kennedy, trying to justify why the deleted scenes got cut. Also, the ability to change into anything made Star very powerful. We really wanted Asha to be our hero, and we wanted her to have to solve all her problems by herself without too much help from Star. This man has a gun to his head. The movie you got is so much better, guys, I promise. And that reminded me of the Frozen 2 documentary from a few years ago. What's the age of the crowd for... Is, there, is it eight and up, we always do, when it's a family? They look younger than that. Oh, really? I think he said six and up. Yeah. Six? Four. Yeah. It's, there's no it's time to breathe. Tight, 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 tight. We've never missed a release date, and there's no way this is going to be the first one. This man has a gun to it. It's clear from the last minute announcement of Moana 2 that Disney is scrambling to make back Wish's huge loss. I mean, the movie grossed around $246 million worldwide against a budget of $200 million. Yeah, they didn't even break even when you count the marketing budget. Walt Disney once said, I don't make pictures just to make money. I make money to make more pictures. And I just don't think that's the case for Disney anymore. Wish could have been good. Actually, Wish could have been great. But Disney made a fairy tale movie with no sauce because they had to play it safe as a legacy project for Disney 100. And they played it so safe that Wish became a corporate product rather than an actual movie. The worst part is I would have loved Wish. A lot of us would. You know how many adult cost animatics of Asha and Starboy on my YouTube recommended Disney? You know how frustrating it is to see two Rosas and mourn for the loss of the movie we could have had? Okay, now I'm gonna try to attempt the fucking mic speech from Breaking Bad. If it's really bad, then I'll just yell out words and replace them. We had a good thing, you stupid son of a bitch. We had Starboy. We had two loving couples. We had everything we needed and it all ran like clockwork. You could have just shut your mouth, cooked, and made as much money as you ever needed. It was perfect. But no, you just had to blow it up. You and your pride and your ego. You just had to be the man. If you'd done your job, known your place, we'd all be fine right now. Oh, wow, that was pretty good for one take. <laughs> okay. I love Disney animation. I don't think they'll hire me after this video, but I love their movies. I love their songs, their characters, their romance, and the sheer artistry, talent, and hard work that goes into animation. I'm literally on YouTube because of my love for Disney, and I would not have written this much about Wish if I wasn't passionate about Disney. But I want their love for movies back. Your formula works, Disney. You wouldn't have Disney 100 if it didn't. Wish is a 3 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, 
Sorry, I literally did not expect this thing to be as crazy as it is. Um, I, I think I wrote like 30 pages about Wish at this point. Anyways, more videos are coming. Thank you so much for your support and patience. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!